Well, let's get into our match preview. West Ham against Spurs. Time to right those wrongs. Time to burst those bubbles. Let's have a look at the form uh, stories of these two teams in the last five games. I mean, West Ham finding wins hard to come by of recent weeks. They're, they're such an up and down team, West Ham. A bit like Spurs, but even more so than Spurs, in my opinion. Only one win in their last five games. Last game, they went away to Newcastle and it looked like at one point it was going to be a really good win away at Newcastle and they just let it slip for free um before that a fairly good draw against aston villa and then they should against, have won that game they should have won yeah 100 percent. they played really well and before that against burnley they drew two all but should have lost that game mm. so i mean i thought burnley were by far the better side in that game and west ham were lucky to get away with one so you never know what you're really going to get with west ham yeah they're they're a tricky team to assess because oh train. <laughs> um sometimes i think they're one of those teams where Obviously, Moyes has them playing a certain way. Um, very compact, well-organized, tough to play against. And they kind of like, it seems like they pick their moments to go forward. They're not a team that's like constantly going to attack. They're not a team that's always going to be in a low block. But it's almost like they go through periods in games. While there'll be one period of game, you look at them, you're thinking, these guys are just going to park the bus. And then there'll be another period in the game where all of a sudden they're starting to press high a bit more and they're starting to put a bit more pressure on you. I think in general how they like to play is a bit transitional, um, defending org organisation, being aggressive, and then as soon as they win the ball back, being very, di very, very direct, hitting the space immediately with likes of Kulis and, and, and Bowen and, and, pa and, and Pakatar's quality as well, getting the ball forward as quickly as possible to their fr front players. And to be fair, it works well because they got very good front players. And I was well... Their defence isn't that great, I don't think. It's, I mean, it's okay. He can make them solid. But the way they attack, as soon as they get the ball, just immediately into Kudus or immediately, immediately into Bowen. And that is what uh, causes teams so much trouble. And as well, they can go long to Antonio. He can hold the ball up and he can run in behind and he like, runs the channels. So it is quite effective. Um, I do feel like West Ham, with the players they have, could they be playing better football? Could they be doing something different than what Moyes is showing? I think there's a good argument to say that. I think there's a good argument to say the team he has is starting to outgrow Moyes. But I have, Moyes would argue, look, we're seventh. We're not far off top top six. Um, we're still in the Europa League. So what, could, what do you have to complain about? And I get that argument as well. Yeah, uh, but I guess like with everything that they've been through, and Moyes has said, said to the fans, you know, you've never had it so good before. And that's 100% right. They have never had it so good before. But like you said, I think you're absolutely spot on what you're saying. With the players that they have in their disposal, they could be playing a different way and still getting similar results. Um, mm. if not better. So you're looking at that front three. Lucas Paqueta could probably get in any side in this in this league. And Mohamed Kudus as well. I think he's a top, top player. And Jared Bowen as well. Like all, all these three, three players won't look out of place at, at most of the clubs in the top four. Yeah, I feel like Moyes, he, how he plays, he doesn't try and gain control of the game. He likes to play in moments. And I feel like with the team he has, if he had a style of play that that was that um, prioritised a bit more controlling games, then I think they, their results might be, be a bit more sustainable. And I feel like right now, for example, that result against Burnley, like it's because they have these games where they just allow teams control, they seed control. And then when you do that, you're relying on either them having an off day or relying on, you, on your team getting the better of them, but you're giving them control and you're saying, look, let's see what you can do. We're banking on the fact that, that we can um, exploit any mistakes you make. And sometimes the opposition aren't going to make those mistakes. Now, Spurs did last time. We went 1-0 up, we had control, and we made those mistakes, and yeah. it cost us. But if we didn't make those mistakes, we probably would have won the game. Yeah. And that's the kind of give and take you uh, get from the kind of way Moyes, Moyes set up his team. Yeah, and it's so important, especially in a game like this, where it means so much to the fans, uh, particularly the West Ham fans. You know, they'll be so up for it uh, tomorrow night at the London Stadium under the lights, which always brings a different kind of intense atmosphere when it is under the lights. It always seems to be West Ham away on a midweek um, nighttime game uh, when mm. we're playing them these days. And it always has that like kind of gritty feel in the air and always the sense of of some sort of trouble was just around the corner uh to be fair and i and you know that however poor they can play at times however good they can play at times you know that they're going to try and put on a show for their fans in this game against tottenham where it means so much to them so that is something to fear um always when going to the london stadium and when you're looking at 
the last five games that we've played against them, you know, very up and down, two wins, two losses and a draw. But quite amazingly so, we haven't won at the London Stadium since Jose Mourinho's first game. Yeah, they've got a good record against us. So that, um, that shows how difficult it is to go there and, and, and win. Um, cause, you know, Only in recent times, though, because before that, weren't we on like a run of like three, four straight wins at the London Stadium? Yeah, that's true. But maybe West Ham also weren't very good then, mm. you know, because uh, when did Moyes, his second spell start? I can't remember. I think it was maybe around the time of, uh, I think it was just after Jose's first game, because I think that was... Jose's first might have been Pellegrini's last game, I think, right. or something like that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think they have been a better team, and since they've become a better team, they have that more. They have more of that confidence when they face us at home. Also, we have been a worse team as well. It's important to note. Under when we used to beat them at, at the Olympic Stadium, as usual, a lot of it was under Pochettino, yeah. and we used to get really good results there. But things have flipped um, in this in this uh, in this game, and they've improved. We declined previously. I would say now, hopefully, we'll get, we're going on the up again. Um, but they're a tough team to play against. Uh, now I'm looking at their team. You know, they've got very very difficult players um, to deal with. So you can see from the head to head, we don't always have our own way against West Ham. And obviously, the game at the Tottenham Stadium back early in the season, that was one of those games where. Uh, you know, just fell into West Ham's lap uh, somehow and they ended up getting the victory. But I, I also came away from that game thinking as much as they won that game, did, I don't feel like that kind of football is sustainable. And I think it's kind of proved it a bit. Mm. In terms of the West Ham team going into this game, I mean, they are just a completely different team when Lucas Paqueta is in the team. He knits everything together uh, when he's got the runners of Bowen and Kudus and Antonio off him. He makes him such a dangerous player. And, you know, behind them, you've got Ward Prowse and Suchek. I, I did expect a bit more um, from Ward Prowse in this West Ham team, to be fair. I don't think maybe the signing has worked out than what it was looking like to work out in the first few games where he was just so dangerous from set pieces and getting goal contributions. Hasn't worked out that way, but what has worked out to be is a solid midfield pair in Suchek and, and Ward-Prowse. Um, you're looking at Alvarez being suspended. Uh, that's a big miss for them. Uh, Gerd and Ariola are both doubts. I mean, Ariola went off at halftime, didn't he, at Newcastle? He's confirmed out, actually. Uh, he's confirmed out now, is he? That's good. That's good news for us uh, with Fabianski in goal. And... Um, Suval, Maravapanos, uh, Zuma and Emerson. It is a defence you can get at. Yeah, I think their defence is actually the weak point. Um, I think Zuma and Maravapanos actually recent times are not having a great time of it, to be honest. I actually think Sufal is having a playing quite well, although he did give away a penalty on the weekend to Gordon. I think recently he has been playing quite well. But I think Zuma and Mavropanos haven't quite clicked together and obviously adding uh, uh, ageing Fabianski behind him. And that's definitely a defence that can be got at. Now, the problem you got is well actually Edson Alvarez is obviously out so that's a massive plus because he's a really important player for them but the problem you've got is they've got two midfielders who are very combative you've got Suchek you've got Wal Prowse who like to do get around the pitch do put in a challenge or two I do think it'll be a massive benefit to us no, no Alvarez though because I think from a defense, from like defensive quality point of view I think he's really great he makes so many good challenges and inceptions and and his awareness is uh, is really great, and his physicality. When I see Suchek, he's obviously a big unit, but he's also someone who, from from a on the ground defensive point of view, can definitely be got at a lot more than Alvarez. I think he missed times a lot of his tackles. I don't think he can get around the pitch like Alvarez can as well. He's a lot slower. And from Wal Prowse's point of view, he's a combative midfielder, but he's that's not his biggest strength. He's much more of a. Uh, ball to feet kind of midfielder as much as he he, he always gives 100 percent. he'll put a challenge in but his biggest strengths don't lie in his defensive game in my opinion his 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 biggest strengths lie in um his ability on the ball his passing range uh that's and that's what he was getting praise for at the beginning of the season he went on a really good run didn't he first four or five games sort of getting a lot of goals um but i always felt like it wasn't sustainable and as soon as that started to dry up all of a sudden he's getting left out of the team because if he's not providing those moments on the ball then you might you're better off having alvarez and, and suchek i guess that's what Moyes is is uh deciding so that midfield is tricky but defensively can be got at the problem is on the ball when you've got Ward Prowse and Pakitar in the middle 
that's something to be very concerned about, especially for Qatar, who's having a wonderful season. But if our midfielders, let's say we go for the midfield that we say Ben Tancor, uh, Madison, and uh, Bissouma, right? Mm. If we go for that midfield, surely that our midfield could potentially have the legs on, on that midfield and really oh. potentially run rings around them. I will think so. If it's going to be Ward, Prowse, and Suchek in a pivot, then I think we would have the legs on that, especially if we have a fresh Ben Tancor who looked really good against uh, Luton. Basuma getting back to his best a bit. Um, and Madison, uh, I, I think Madison will become very, very hard for them to track as well. I think he'll be in all those half spaces. I don't see Suchek being able to deal with that. I think it's going to be very difficult for him to do that. So I do think the midfield, we might have the upper hand there. I think obviously in the front line, um, the wingers against the fullbacks, you've got Werner and Johnson against Emerson and Soufal. Um, I think their fullbacks are actually pretty good. You know, I was I thought going looking at their game in the Tottenham Stadium, I thought it was one of their biggest weaknesses, but I was proved wrong. They actually had quite good games that day. And I think of late, I've looked at them and they're actually not, not bad. I do think defensively they can be caught. I think they're, uh, they're decent going forward. But defensively, you know, with, uh, they don't have the pace that our wingers have. So... I do think if they if they get some space and drive into it, they can be got at. But it's whether they give them the space, and that's you know West Ham don't like to give space, so yeah. that's going to be interesting. I think people sleep on Sufal a bit because he's got the same return as Pedro Porro has this year, seven assists, mm. and he doesn't take the set pieces where Pedro Porro's had a, had a few from uh, set pieces. Um, so he's got probably more open play assists this season than Pedro Porro, same amount as Brennan Johnson as well. So I mean, he is having some season. He's got good delivery on the from the on the on the from fullback. I don't think he's like as good as Porro when it comes to like his general play, like his on the ball passing ability and stuff like that. But when it comes to just natural, like purely when he gets to the byline and his delivery from uh, around the penalty area, it is pretty good. And um, I think he got an assist for Antonio against Villa uh, with that diving header that again falls from across from the right hand side. So he definitely has that delivery. He's capable of it. So we might have to make sure that. Um, whoever's playing um, or if it's Werner on the left he's tracking him because if you allow Sufal that delivery it's going to be difficult to stop Antonio in the box yeah um, and look like, like we say they've got someone to aim at as opposed to we don't mm. really have someone to aim at to float those crosses in like that we need the low driven ones for Sonny to get on the end of or Werner or Brennan to get at the back post um, let's talk about Calvin Phillips because uh, it's always fun to talk about Calvin Phillips at this time but West Ham fans obviously don't seem very happy with him. He was saw, seen uh, swearing, put his, his middle finger up at the uh, West Ham fans. I mean, we were speaking in uh, one of our videos earlier on today saying, well, I was saying that he's been flop of the season and I don't think anyone comes close to him. I mean, what has gone wrong for him? Yeah, he's not had a good time at Man City. Pep's been calling him fat. He said he's um, not ready to play in his system. Um, it's just how long has he been a man team now over, over a year and I think he, he joined last summer didn't he yeah so what, 18 months he's just a, it's been a disaster how many Premier League games has actually played for them like a handful probably yeah, um, it's really been a terrible terrible move and then he gets this big move for West Ham and I'm guessing the the view is you know I'm going to go go to West Ham I'm going to start he actually apparently apparently he rejected a move to Juventus apparently to stay is that at West right? I, I think so I think I read that he rejected move to Juventus and because he wants to stay in the Premier League and just uh, make sure that he's catching the eye of Southgate in, to in time for the Euros. Oh, he's catching the eye, all right. Yeah, the unfortunately. The eye to stay away. Exactly. That's that's the problem at the moment. He it, he really th he really thought he would come to West Ham and it would be the perfect kind of club to restart his, his career. And it's just gone the opposite way. If anything, his stock's probably never been lower. Had an absolute hor horrendous debut where he... Um, Conceded, he made that mistake, didn't he? I can't remember who was against, but he passed it straight to an yeah. attacker yeah. and they scored. He's then, I think, has he been sent off in one of the games? That game was against uh, Bournemouth, yeah. He got sent off against Forrest as he well. He got sent off against Forrest and then against Newcastle. He comes on at 3 1 up, gives away a penalty and um, has just a bit of a shocker and then they end up losing 4 3. Really couldn't have gone any worse uh, for, for Phillips. So, I don't think he starts this game. I, I would don't love know. him to start. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I just think if I don't think Moyes is going to want to put him under that kind of pressure in such a big game because imagine he starts this game and he has a, it doesn't play well, the knives are really going to be out for him from the West Ham fans because it's their cup final. So yeah. it's really going to be diff like they wouldn't be able to tolerate that. Um, if he had a stinker at home to Spurs, I'd be his last game probably. <laughs> so 
I think it's probably smarter for if he doesn't start him. Um, look, we all know as a player in there, we all know what a good player he was at Leeds. And man, we were, the Euros of 2020, he was brilliant in the, in uh, in that tournament. He was a star performer. He got player of the tournament, didn't he, from an England perspective? Was he England player of the tournament? Yeah, probably. I'm pretty sure he was England player of the tournament. And now, fast forward four years, Kobe Maynard is ahead of him in the pecking order. Kobe, yeah. And he's, you know getting pelters by West Ham fans calling him useless and he's putting his middle finger up that that's where his career has gone I do feel that is the behaviour of someone who's um, feeling the pressure yes that's the best way to put it feeling the pressure he's, it's, it's a lot on him clearly he's taking its toll the fact he reacted that way shows that it, and also maybe he's starting to lose a bit of self-belief I think if you're assured in yourself and you have that self-belief that you know you're the player you are and you've got and you're confident in that. I don't think you react like that. You mm. let your football do the talking. But the fact that you thought it'll, um, that was his best course of action shows that he's got a lot of on, on a lot of weight on his shoulders. It seems. Um, so I do hope he uh, gets back to his best at some point. Maybe not at West Ham, but I do hope he uh, gets back to his best because I do think he's a good player. But he's having a horrendous time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I thought it was very smart from Ange Postacoglu not to, to resist the temptation of playing Mickey van der Ven against um, Luton on the weekend. Now he's fresh uh, with a few days more um, uh, training behind him. Didn't play at the weekend, didn't even get one minute. And now we're going to need him so much. He's probably going to be one of our most vital players tomorrow night. Yeah, um, especially when you've got people like Bowen and Antonio running in behind and causing trouble, uh, exploiting that space. You've got Antonio who likes to run the channels. So even West Ham, when they're, even if they're not playing an accurate ball, what they'll do is they'll just put it into the channel and just let Antonio chase after it. So And... Uh, and when and they bank on him basically getting there first and being able to hold it up that and uh, a lot of the time it does work so the big uh element for van der ven is making sure when they do that he's getting to the ball first and not giving him that opportunity and they've got one of the best in behind attackers in the league in my opinion in uh bowen i think he's such a threat in those situations um getting on the end of through balls you even saw it on the weekend. Kudas played a lovely ball into him. He had still had a lot of work to do, but he carried the ball about uh, half the length, for the, uh, about 20, 30 yards, and slotted it with his right foot. Um, so Bowen is an exceptional threat. Um, so I think that left-hand side, there's going to be a lot to deal with. Um, Kudas on that on the other side um, is more of a ball-to-feet kind of player. He likes to take people on with his dribbling ability. So Porro is going to have his work out there. But in terms of the left-hand side, that's where a lot of the running in behind is going to happen, in my opinion. And so Van der Ven's got to be alert to that. Mm. Yeah, well, it's going to be an almighty battle tomorrow night at the London Stadium. It's time to burst those bubbles once and for all this season. And I can't stress how important this game is. Um, not only to put West Ham back in their place, but also in terms of the top four race, we've got two games now, this game and the Nottingham Forest game at the weekend. And then those big games start to come, the Newcastles, the Arsenals, um, the Liverpools, uh, Man City is going to be later in the season now. But it's important just to get s these six points um, going into those games, uh, especially with Aston Villa playing Man City in this midweek. So I can't stress how important it is and how important it is important it is for us to go and bring out our A game for this game. We saw the last time we were in a really crunch game, a really important game. We come up trumps. We played a really good game at Villa Park. So hopefully we can go into this with the same mentality. Yeah, and to be fair, um, when we've had like important away games, we have seemed to turn up. Emirates, we turned up. Eti Etihad, we turned up. Villa, Villa away, we turned up. So I hope we follow suit uh, in this one. Obviously, we have had some difficult displays away from home as well. But I think by and large, in like the bigger games away from home... Old Trafford as well. To Old Trafford, extent. we had a depleted team and we got a draw. So we've always kind of given a good account of ourselves in these kind of uh, bigger games away from home. And I really hope the same happens uh, on Tuesday. And that's all I can ask for. I know it's going to be a difficult game. I, I really do think West Ham are, you know, they've got a lot of underrated players. They've got a lot of players who could get into a lot better teams than them. So it's going to be a difficult game. And, I, and considering how, how motivated they're going to be, I do find it difficult to believe that we are going to go actually and get three points there. I do think they're going to find a way to get a point. But I do expect that Spurs will dominate possession. I do expect that we will... Um, build up the play uh, how we how we usually do it through good football we will get some joy their defense is definitely there for the taking if we i do think we'll create chances i just fear that 
we won't be able to keep the back door shut. And with the talent they have in the front line, if we don't, they're going to exploit it. Yeah, I mean, we couldn't keep the back door shut against Luton. We can ended up conceded after two minutes. I mean, if we concede after two minutes in this game, I do fear for us. I, I say this every game, and I'm going to say it again. I just want us to start fast for once. Bloody hell, please. Can we take the lead in the game in the first half? Like, we did against West Ham last possible? time. Yeah, it's true, we mm -hmm. did. Uh, but then Adogi just decided to, uh, well, who is it, play Bowen through one goal. <laughs> yeah. Um, ridiculous stuff. So can we just go through a game without a mistake and without going behind in recent weeks like we've won only two away games since the beginning of november like mm. how was that put before then we were winning away game after away game like what has happened to us away from home like seriously well we're a lot of that loss against fulham last time out yeah before that we beat villa 4-0 then everton happened and man man united happened and brighton happened and before mm. that was nottingham forest where we won so i mean we're really not having a good time of it on the road and it's time to right those wrongs yeah and it's i it's going to be very, very difficult to do that in this game. I really believe that. I don't know if we will. Uh, just the, the level we're at at the moment. I actually don't think we're playing badly. Um, obviously, Fulham game aside, recently, the performances have been a lot better. I thought Palace, Villa and Luton was a lot better than the previous games before that. We're not playing badly, but we're not playing to our capabilities. We're not blowing, we're not blowing anyone away. Um, that's reality. And I don't see us blowing away West Ham on Tuesday either. I think West Ham are a good team and they're going to... They're gonna, really be up for this one especially under the lights on an evening game as well um, they're going to try and make it a hostile atmosphere but if Tottenham do get like an early goal or they do settle down quite early then I wouldn't be surprised if you, they, that we really do like control the game mm -hmm. I think we have the capability of doing that you know maybe it, it, it's very it's very possible we could click into gear van der ven is um stopping those runs over the top we're just and then all of a sudden we're penning them in and we're not allowing them out because there will be a point where we are they're allowing us control of the game they're in their deep block and they're giving us control and they're going to say to us hey can you break us down now the tottenham stadium last time out we they did that and we couldn't really we got the goal but we we created some half chances and i think richarlison i remember mr Giltwedge header right at the end but we didn't create enough good quality chances so we just got to make sure that in this time around when in those moments in the game when we're on top we have to take full advantage of those moments because it's not going to be the whole game like that yeah and i, I would say as well like when we go back talking about mickey van der ven like our win percentage with him in the team is just insane and we have so much more of a chance of winning games and shutting the opposition out if he is in the team he mm -hmm. is that good so i get it's a massive massive plus to have mickey van der ven in this team and it makes me a lot more confident going into this game as maybe as i would have if dragushin was there so Big plus for us. Uh, we're both going for two all draws, unfortunately. I am, as, as the stream has gone on, I am uh, kind of anticipating that revenge a bit more and I'm just licking my lips at the, uh, <laughs> at the thought of it. So I might change it to a 3-2 win because we just have to win this game. Um, we have to shut those lot up. We can't, I can't be leaving that stadium tomorrow night with them happy. It's the oh. worst thing. It's the worst thing after maybe going after leaving Arsenal uh, with a loss. So... There's nothing sweeter than shutting up those two stadiums. And let's hope we can do that tomorrow night in East, in the East End, in the East shit of London. And um, look, we'll be there at the stadium. It is one of my... Uh, I hate going there. Yeah. I really do hate going there. You've got to take your binoculars to watch the game. You sit that far away from the pitch. And, um, pain to get to. Yeah, it's a pain to get to. So... Look, we'll be there. We'll be there with our numbers. We'll be there in full voice and we'll be cheering the boys, hopefully, to three points tomorrow night. It's going to be Amir and Barnaby in the studio with you guys tomorrow. So come in and tune in for them. We'll be getting the content from inside the London Stadium. But thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on, you Spurs. Spurs.